Albert. Well, hopefully, yeah. My little cloud in the corner says recording. Now, sorry to people out there thinking, what is he talking about? But Shane Bland has trusted us to run his show tonight. Well, our show, National Hot Rod Show. So welcome to, uh, what was, what's it called, Brian? It's Past, Present and Future. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, that was it, yeah. Yeah, episode PDF, three. That's the one. So that, that's Shane's name. We like it, you know, but because of uh, how well he did with presenting that name, we've given him the week off. So he's trusted, uh, yeah, Brian over there and myself, Gary. And this week, um, we, we're mixing it up because, as we said, past, present and future. And we've got someone very much from the present and the future, uh, a young man who's, uh, yeah, Doing very well in National Hot Rods, uh, number nine two five, Jeff Reardon. So, Jeff, hey, how are you doing? welcome along. Thanks. Thanks very much for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah it's great. It's great. We we wanted to uh, we, we had a sort of bit of a plan on uh, different guests we wanted to bring in, and uh, it was essential that it wasn't just all about English National Hot Rods because obviously we're National Hot Rods, but it's international. And uh, and you're of course from Ireland, Southern Ireland, and uh, and you're very much one of the top drivers down there. So uh, yeah, welcome along. Thanks very much. I appreciate it. It's nice to get uh, to get involved in all this stuff. Um, you know, yeah, you're doing a great job at the moment. So it's great to get a, 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 an Irish foot, I suppose, in the door for, for <laughs> once. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we wanted to uh, make it very much uh, not uh, grilling you under the spotlights, but just having a bit of a chat, finding out some stuff about you and what your plans are. So yeah. Uh, we just kind of thought it'd be nice to sit down uh, over a beer and have a chat. So uh, I haven't actually got any beer. And, uh, no, I haven't either. Water, just so, uh, okay. Yeah. 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 It's, the pubs are all, it's the pubs are, if the pubs are open, we could do a video chat over a pub. But we can't. <laughs> yeah, no chance of that. Yeah. No, well, I, I think that's probably... I think, tip, like, you know, Ireland, the Tipperary, the, the, the track is, like, famous uh, for super fast racing but also the crack you know the, like the whole classic islands i mean if yeah. you even if you're not into motor racing uh you know the islands obviously known for the crack but if you combine yeah. all of it you've got the ultimate crack so tell us a bit about where you race and and generally the uh yeah what it's like back home uh it's great you know back at home racing in Tipper area that's where we grew up and uh, we don't have any other track other like england and i suppose northern Ireland, we only race in the one track so i've grown up there and that's where we started and um, i was racing there when I was younger and I was I was there when my dad was racing. Uh it, it's it's quite a small community I would say. You know, so we I grew up with the majority of the drivers. So I get to I kinda of grow up with the drivers that are still racing now and, and maybe have, have gone. So I got to experience I suppose a great deal of uh community sense of community in Tipperary. Uh you become very close to people and um it's a really, really nice way to be, you know, I, I always find that when we go travelling to England and to Northern Ireland you know, the people from Tipperary are really, really good to come and support us and, and really strive uh, to make us do, to get, get us to do well. Um, and it's really nice to be a part of that, uh, you know, that one, the kind of the, the saying is like, when one strives, we all strive. And it's a great way to be, you know, not, not just one driver looking out for himself. It, it's kind of a community of us um, looking out for each other, I suppose, um, when we go traveling and to support each other, which is a really nice way to be, you know. That sounds really cool, doesn't it? There's how many... Um... I mean, I know you haven't raced for a while in uh, in Tipperary, but what sort of numbers of national hot rods are you getting in a race? Uh, we were, I think, just before the lockdown, we were up to about six or seven. Yeah. Um, and yeah. since the lockdown has come, our second lockdown here, we've actually gained, I think, is it uh, two, definitely two more cars, if not three, um, which is great. So then it would bring us up to around 10 or 11, which is roughly, that. there's, uh, there's probably about 12 cars in Ireland but they just don't seem to, like we have Les Capelli, who is around, has a car, but just doesn't seem to get a chance to come down or get out for a while. So another car that is there. Um, there's a good few cars that are kind of floating around. Eddie Foot is another one. So, you know, there is in around 12 or 13 cars, I suppose, that could be racing, but uh, I don't know, whatever the reasons be, we just don't seem to get the most. But uh, on average, you get around five or six cars in a race, daily, which is, it's, it's, it's okay, not great. So, I mean, do you find that when you come over for like the nationals or the world final and suddenly you've got the busy grids, do you find that having raced against a smaller number that that becomes a big challenge when you're maybe on the mainland and up against bigger fields of cars? Or, or do you feel like the skills that you learn at Tipperary are completely transferable? Um, there's always, I suppose, a slight bit of a disadvantage. I feel myself, I think for someone like, um, David and Shane 
when they go over there, they've been at it for so long that it's just become second nature and um, they, mm. they, they really do get along well over there. I suppose I'm still learning to deal with that traffic and to deal with those busy um, those busy tracks. Um, yeah, I, 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 not, not in the sense that I'm not fast. I just kind of would say that I, make, I don't make snappy enough decisions. I don't read the traffic good enough kind of what lane of traffic to be in. Um, what I would say is the advantage about Tipperary, we do have less numbers, um, but it allows us to create extremely fast cars. And when we do go overseas, I find that we do, in, in all kind of formulas, I suppose, not just national powers, we seem to build extremely fast cars because kind of after five or six laps, you kind of slot onto maybe a single file. So you really have to work at your setup and at your car and at your driving to be able to gain that pace, gain that half a tenth to really uh, not only catch a driver, but, but to hopefully pass them. I would say we still, I, I do lack a bit in traffic experience. I do try and get up to the north as much as I can. Um, if I can get in for a couple of domestic rounds, they do clash with a lot of our own round, which is a bit of a, a bit unfortunate. Uh, another aspect I would think is not great is we, we are not allowed bank, we're not allowed to use a tire or log a tire. Uh, now I know it's all for um, to keep everything fair, but I find that like if I was able to go to the north and I was able to uh, put on a new tire and say if I had to use that new tire for all true races, and would say I was never allowed to use a tire again even. At yeah. least then it kind of puts me on some bit of a level playing field with the other drivers. I find that I'm, I have to mind my tires because I have to race in my own region maybe the next day or the weekend after. Uh, yeah. So it is a bit difficult. I would like to have more traffic experience, but you know, I suppose at the end of the day when you get into the car at Hensford and when the flag drops, it is just instinct. You know, you are just driving. If it's a race at the end of the day and you have to, you know, try to do the best you can and, um, but you know, we will work with all we have, and we keep building experience until we, till we're up there, I suppose. I mean, uh, Hendersford or Ipswich almost feels slow compared to Tipperary because that is that is one quick track, isn't it? Uh, yeah, a lot. Of, I find that I suppose again when you grow up there, it's not really much of a. I, I don't really see the, the pace that the other drivers see. I remember Jack Blood came over the first time, and he was just like, "This is totally really, really fast." <laughs> he was yeah, just really, he, could, he couldn't yeah. believe it. And yeah. I and I even found it amazing, like because you know he's obviously the last couple of years been up, kind of top four, top five in in the world final, and I found it amazing that he thought our track was faster than Hensford. I even find Hensford faster than Tipperary because it's so short. You're kind of coming in, turning straight. It is longer gaps, I suppose, yeah. um, in that yeah. sense. Uh, but I, I again like Tipperary. Again, when you grow up there, I suppose you don't really notice the the pace. That it, it does. Tipperary is a great track in the sense that a lot of drivers say it really gets you to know where your car is at and you get to see the power that you really have because it's a long straight and you really get to see how your car is cornering because of those tight bank bins. So it really gets the car to be an all around good car, you know? Mm -hmm. And so we talked about uh, growing up there. How did you get into national hot rods and how did you actually get into your sort of early memories of motorsport and oval racing? Um, well, my dad was the first person in our family to get into it. He started off in grass racing and he, I suppose he heard about national hot racing and he branched over to, I think it would have been a two litre class at the time. It was like an ex national hot rod class. And he did a bit of racing for that really a couple of years and then he bought a national hot rod. Uh, and that's how I suppose we got into it. And that's uh, how I got into it. When my dad decided to take a step back from racing, um, I, I, he said, here's the car, we'll see how you get on with it. And it kind of threw me in the deeper end, I suppose, um, in one sense. But it's been going well so far. You know, like great memories of Tipperary of uh, when I was younger. I suppose the Tipperary it was great because I never got to travel over with my mum and dad because I was too much hassle as a young man. Um, so, <laughs> so they would just leave me. So I, I think the Europeans were the weekends that I got to see the other drivers and like I got to experience these these big name drivers, you know, like the likes of like Ricky Hahn and uh, you know John Stewart coming over. Like that was a really big experience for me. Um, I think the first time my dad met Colin Colin White was the time I was I was feeling very adventurous and I climbed my way into the back of his bus. Um, <laughs> And my dad had to come over and get me out. And that was the first <laughs> time I think my dad met my dad met Colin White. And he said, I just better get my son there. <laughs> so that, and and again, like it took me years later to even realize who Colin White was and how much of a, a, a big name he was in the sport, you know. Yeah. Uh, so I didn't never, never had you down as a little uh, you know, sort of a troublemaker as a kid. You know, oh, the uh, biggest you know, the worst I, I, little I don't think you ever give us any trouble, time. Brian, does it? When we when we were stewarding him, do we ever have any trouble with Jeff? I don't think we ever did, do we? Probably the only driver you didn't give a black cross to. No, I think I seem to remember one Hensford. I think I might have given you a DQ, actually. I vaguely have very much so. I bet yeah. I had to tell you about it. I bet he didn't say anything. It, I wouldn't have done no, it. I don't, I, got, I, don't, 
I don't, and he, he wasn't going to tell me either until he said it there. He threw him under the bus. He, you know, I didn't even know if I get it. <laughs> so, me and Brian are going to have a separate video chat when this is over here about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's worried about that. I can imagine, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so um, sure, go on, I mean, go Yeah, just you're talking about your dad. I mean, are there any pressures that come with being the son of Mike Reardon? Um, or is that an advantage because you've got somebody who knows the ropes and can... Uh, I suppose yeah. it's kind of a, a glass half, a half empty, half full kind of situation. Um, my dad was a an incredible driver, and, and, and in my eyes, one of the greatest to come out of Tipperary because he really, I felt, set the bar high. Uh, there's a, a very select few drivers I feel like come out of Tipperary that have done so well, and I felt like my dad was one of these drivers that just really set the bar high. And you know, in his era, I suppose he was the quickest man out there. He was the man that everybody around Tipperary wanted to beat, and when he got overseas. Um, other than a bit of bad luck that kind of came his way, he really was a fast man to be considered and 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 to be um to be rep to to be taught about. Mm. Uh, in, in some sense, I suppose it is a lot to try and maybe it is sometimes a, a bit to live up to because everybody knows what he did and what he, he was capable of doing in a car. And you know, it would be nice to be able to do what he did, if not maybe better. Hopefully, um. Yeah. Uh, but the a huge advantage is to have him on my side and, and you know, and in, with my, in my corner because he has that wealth of experience um, behind him. And, you know, it's like having the best coach uh, at Tipperary behind you. You know, a lot of drivers will come looking for help of him in other classes that are no, that know the vast of his knowledge and, and his experience in racing. And, you know, to have that with me is great because um, he's a great coach. He's a great, you know, mentor to have. He, teaches you you're always learning on a daily basis racing and even in the garage and um, so it is a huge advantage as well as you know i suppose trying to live up to the name um at the same time i mean is he i you often hear of uh, parents of racing drivers who say they are more nervous watching their sons oh. and daughters race than they were when they oh. raced themselves. Is he a bag of nerves when you're... Um, Yo, he's around? just gotten worse. He's gotten worse over the years. I think <laughs> he's, really, he's, he's realized I'm a bit more of a kamikaze driver than uh, than he would like. And uh, he, he's, become, he's become a ball of nerves. I think he started off, he was okay. He would kind of just kind of maybe walk back and forth along the track. And I think he said at the start of this, he said, I'm just going to go sit in the back of the truck because I can't. I can't be dealing with it anymore. He said the stress is, is driving him <laughs> mad. But uh, now he's very good. He, he he keeps his calm. He keeps his cool in, on a daily basis on a racing day, um, which I suppose helps as a driver enough that he's not getting worked up. But I'm not getting worked up um, over stuff. Um, yeah. So now in general, like he's not. And if he is, he doesn't show it. So it's a good <laughs> thing. <laughs> he's a cool. He's a cool guy. He's a cool man. Your dad, you know. Yeah, he is very calm, yeah. collected. And uh, so, of course, he had many rivals out in the track, and maybe some of them rivals might be your heroes. Did you have any heroes other than your dad growing up as, as in, at home, or you know, overseas like Ricky? Uh, Hall, or... I I was lucky enough that I got to watch Shane Murphy grow from a young man. I suppose it, it grows, it turns back on me like he was the young man. We say like I am trying to make his name, and I got to watch him evolve into this great driver and this phenomenal uh, force we reckoned with. I suppose the national heroes. And that was really cool. And I saw what, you know, I, I will be a very close, we'll be very close to the Murphys. And I got to see, I suppose, you know, the level that they put into it, the, the, the amount of work and time that they put into yeah. just to get there and to, be, to stay there. Um, so that, I suppose, Shane would definitely be someone that I would always look up to. And, and it's great because I still get to talk to him, you know, on a weekend basis. And he's always very open and very helpful uh, with his advice. Um, I suppose, like, uh, other heroes, I, uh, I always, I always like, yeah, and I suppose you have to you have to give a big mention to Armand Christie, um, who really, really was. I suppose I, again before my time, he won his last world final the year I was born, and his last world final in ninety six, oh, um, which is really cool. Yeah, oh, yeah. As, you, as you were talking about as you, as you were talking about it last week, I said I'd give it an honor. Oh, that's last. perfect. So we we done um, that well, didn't we? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it kind of very well. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I, I was very lucky. Uh, I suppose in the last number of years, I got to to meet Armand and talk to him. And uh, he was just such a great man and a really nice man. And he was always so open and very uh, good about talking about his racing career. And you'd actually learn a lot from him. So it would be hard to get him to stop talking. And John would always say was the thing. He was a great a great man to talk to. Um, other heroes, I I don't, I couldn't really pick him up. I think I always liked John Stewart. He was a really good, I, I think he was a really good man for a race. Like he was always cool and coming up through the traffic. Um, I think it shows it shows in one world final with Tom. 
that was one of my favourite world finals. To I'm, watch. Sensing, uh, I'm sensing you're going to come out and you say Shane Bland in a minute, but you know we're we're, we're editing that no, video. I, you know I'll do a lip sync. That, you yeah. know. <laughs> no, I can I can say Shane Bland if you need to give him a plug for the website just to make sure that this podcast is good. Like, of course, Shane. <laughs> I would actually I would actually mention his dad as well, another man who was a great racer as well. Yeah, yeah good man to watch yeah. in his racing. Yeah, so yeah, I there's, there's I suppose if you look at heroes, you could look at a lot of drivers to look at. I think nowadays you have a lot of drivers to consider to be a hero. Uh, I I still enjoy John Christie's career, <clears throat> not that it's over or anything, but I'm just saying like his career has been so cool. Um, yeah. in regards, is, he, like, is he retired time. recently? He keeps retiring and coming yeah. back. Doesn't he? He's retiring and coming right? back. He's getting, he's, getting, he's getting old at this stage. He's like pushing on. He's getting grey in the beard, I think, recently. <laughs> so he, he, he is Don't mention that in front of Gary. We're trying to get him on, but he's got an agent. You know, it's like his agent had a pilot's oh, agent. Yeah, you know, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah he's got a pilot. Yeah, I'm, a free, I'm a freelance agent. You can just get me anytime. I'm fine. <laughs> I don't, I, I don't need an agent yet. While we're talking about John Christie, what do you think about this Lotus? Uh, it's a lovely cooking car, you know. Uh, yeah. It's a really nice looking is, car. Is it going to do what uh, his dad did and uh, create a revolution? Uh, I, I think if there was a one man to do it and one man who's kind of, I suppose, uh, mad enough in regards to trying different stuff and trying new stuff on the car, John is definitely the man to do it. Uh, mm-hmm. he's, got, uh, uh, he's got a great team, I suppose, behind him, from what I can hear. Um, with, with getting the car ready and they're really really invested in doing this properly it looks fantastic so far as what i can see um yeah so you know i'd say it could be a, definitely a car to be to be looked at but you know th- there's a lot of new cars i suppose there's a lot of cars from the coming out and um yeah. that are already it's really nice yeah really the polo nice. looks nice and i think the the new fiesta autocross car looks looks really nice at the moment especially maybe when the, you have the like when you have the likes of shane blends bringing it out you know um, you, it's going to be uh, and, and Glenn Bella, sorry, as well. You know, yeah. you're hoping that you will they'll get some good pace as well as Terry Hunt or yeah. Terry getting good pace out of it. You know, it'll be good to see a bit of a diversity with yeah. two different cars. Yeah. I like what they, what they what they what they were saying when, when it's talking with Sean as well that upright position, which is sort of like you can see the advantage if you if you're driving. I mean, I'm, my my racing's terrible, but I always think like, where is that bonnet? And when I sat in the team yeah. before, it's it's like such a you're so far back. Exactly. I mean, do, yeah, yeah. do you think Tigra's going to be like you know the direction that you're going to stay with, or have you got any plans? Uh, I think for the moment, I think it's just a bit difficult. I think with uh, the way uh, kind of Brexit and, and our import taste stuff was going at the moment, it kind of makes it a bit difficult to go looking um, at stuff overseas for a while. Uh, you know, like there's other areas that are, of prices that are being risen as well, and sure. uh, it's very, sure. it's just for a while. I think just to see how kind of things settle out. Um, mm-hmm. to see what way they're going to start pricing stuff that we'll, we won't be looking for a while but you yeah. know you, know, you never know like, it, 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 it's, it's all, you know something might pop up you never know yeah and uh, just at, racing back at home uh, I, I see that I think you're sort of fourth in the points at the moment so which is good that there's been a bit more competition we've obviously seen you almost as a as a shoe in for the last few world finals um, I, th- I think it's a three places on offer this year yeah we got bumped up to three places this year which is a great uh motivational thing for the track and for the drivers that are out there because our numbers have grown so I think it was just before we were there was there were still six or seven of us fighting for two positions which is um, yeah. It's, yeah. it's kind of a suicide yeah. mission really because you're trying to get that yeah. two positions so three yeah. is great it gives it gives us all more incentive to get out there that you're, you, you have a bit of a better chance of qualifying and um, I suppose like this year I, I haven't had a, a great kind of start or I wouldn't have had a great start to the season I was um, I, I've somehow I've heard some um, engine engine problem, and I just can't seem to get rid of this uh, this problem in the engine. And I, I've been fighting with it for the last couple of meetings, and it's kind of affected uh, my qualifying. And an unfortunate thing about Tipperary is because there is less cars, you know, your your chances of traffic slowing you up and other kind of aspects of racing to maybe get up to the front and get a good position is a bit harder. Um, mm-hmm. so it, it is a, it is a very tough fight. To, to get those positions and to get any of the top three will be a very tough fight, you know, um, yeah. from here on out. You know. Of course, you, uh, you won the Republic of Ireland points championship in 2018, didn't you? Yeah, and, yeah I did, yeah. Uh, I mean, you must have been absolutely delighted with that at that particular point. Uh, yeah, it was a great, a great achievement, I suppose. I think it was my, it was my second or third season in the sport, um, you know, so in, in National Harvard. So it was a great achievement for it. It was a huge boost for us going into that year, um, going into the world final that year. We had 
got a great chance to develop the car and uh, work really well to make a good fast car. And, and I think we did so uh, going into that world final. We didn't do as bad as we thought we were going to do. And, uh, um, and it was a great, a great thing to be able to win the points championship. It's a big deal now, I suppose, uh, to win points championship because it's very hard in every region. So yeah. it is a big deal. It was very, very nice for us. And it was a very, I suppose, it was a satisfying feeling to, to be able to bring over a nice silver roof. Yeah, I can imagine. And then 2019, was 10th was in 2019 your best world final finish? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, yeah. looking to improve on that if we oh, get this race run in 21. And uh, yeah. I mean, it's it seems to me that every year you've been nibbling away I remember the first time you came over for the speed weekend and uh, it, I can imagine it must've been quite overwhelming to have been racing uh, your first ever speed weekend. I can, I can uh, only imagine what it must be. I mean, I stewarding it. I used to be, I used to have butterflies for about two months <laughs> up to it. So I dread to think what it was like <laughs> racing it. Um, uh, it, it. I suppose there's a, there's a, a positive and negative side to it. Like it, it is every kid's dream who races and all races to be on that grid and to be, racing uh, in the world final um, so it was I suppose quite a cool sensation to be there you know got to take it all in I think the, the best memory I have it was uh, standing in the centre field for the hot laps just looking at the crowd as they drive as the car drove around it's, it's, it's just the coolest place to be I think that weekend you know yeah. you can't be being at, at Exit for the for speed weekend and it is a, it is even better part, it is even a better thing to be a part of it and to be you know sitting at the grid and and to know you've worked extremely hard to get there and to, to achieve that great position where you're at a qualifying or where you finish, you know, it's a huge, huge thing, you know, and I think it's, yeah, it's, it's a really great weekend to be a part of, you know. Yeah, it's so special. Is the world one. final, yeah. is it still the mecca? Is yeah. the world final still the gold, the golden chalice, you know, the thing that you want more than anything else? Yeah. To be on that uh, yeah. yeah, 100%. You just can't beat that sensation. You know, of, of sitting there, I suppose, the sitting there for 20 minutes before the race starts, that's a small bit torturous for the drivers. But oh, at the same time, you know what? I was watching that video yeah. that's on Facebook that you filmed, Gary, from the infield. Yeah. I, I love it. When the cars, are, when it's just the, the grid is silent, uh, yeah, all the that's... teams have left and the car, the drivers are just sat in the cars on the grid and the music is playing. That to yeah. me, know, uh, like, it's but like, it's, like the silence. that. The silence it's is complete amazing. silent. And like, I, I actually have to try and distract myself for that. I think it's, it's easily like five or ten minutes, I'd say, that we're inside, that they're just playing music and, you know, the build-up. And I, I actually have to try and distract myself because I'm sitting in the car with the thoughts on, I have to make sure that you have to try and get in and make sure you get your, you're trying to think about why the race is going to play out. So I actually just start listening to the music and I think it's like slow my face and just playing like changing, you know, everything is changing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Inside, I'm inside in the car just trying to like pop my head and just listen to music and distract myself for that build-up. Um, because if you overthink it, it just it just kill you inside the car. Yeah, we, we talked last week about drivers overthinking it, but you, you can get that because the you I mean, if it was only twenty minutes waiting, you do well. Because I think mean, we we well we used to start lining up about two hours before, so you know. Yeah, it was half past ten. Long, exactly. start, yeah, wasn't it? well, you yeah. have to. You really have to be to be fair, and it's and it works. You know, the whole thing works. I think you know we've yeah, yeah, we've it talked works about really well, like Saturday it. night or reverse grid, but I love I love that it's special. You know, and it's a one off completely. I, yeah. As much as, yeah, and I, I'm in complete agreement. I know everyone, there's other drivers that are trying to change at the moment and maybe like a different format. But I genuinely I think it's just so unique and it's so special that I think it, it's so cool. I mean, you can go to Hensford and, and as exciting as the weekend is, you have your four heats uh, for your driving. Like that's, that's great to be a part of that too, too as well. But I think the, the individual hot laps are just something different. It brings something different yeah. to the table. If you're a spectator, you know, you, you really want to see, can someone beat another driver? I think it was that uh, last year, Rob put it on pole and you were like, that, that's surely it. Somebody, nobody can come match the time. And I think yeah. David came out and was like a small bit behind him. And we were like, oh, that's so close. Like it was just, I was really excited. And like there has been over the years, like some incredible, those lap times where you just think they can't get any faster. And then someone just, bangs out at a faster time you're like that's amazing like that's yeah, you know that's nice. and, that's, and that's, that's a huge build up because you want to see then the next day you know yeah. can the driver perform from that position and, and, and yeah I just think there's no other spectacle that's like that you know and I think there's other aspects that play into it as well I think if you had to do like you know if you had to do heats in a final for the world final I mean you're going to lose a lot some drivers in that in that yeah. process and 
Yeah. And that's not really fair either because you spend 15, 15 rounds of the year just trying to get to that point. And then if you like yeah. don't make it past race one because somebody, you know, stalled the car on the line and you run into the back of them, like that's yeah. your weekend done. And that's, that's a bit of a, a buzzkill. So I think the, the hot laps in itself is a great, a great system. I would like to see what it would be like. I think it was a, like years ago when they used to do the, you'd have groups and you would go out with other cars for like five or 10 minutes. I thought that yeah, was the a, 96 I, race was like that, yeah. wasn't yeah. it? That, yeah. We suggested that one time to try to mix up the two. So do one session of that and one session of the hot laps and then you're, whoever was the best at the two. But the, the time restraints on the weekend is, is tough. I you know, know, yeah, 100%. I can, can see where the, the, the restraint comes in. Yeah, uh, yeah, I just, yeah. I, you know, I definitely think the lap times is another aspect because you could be great in traffic in regards to like be a really fast driver, but you can't, you have to be able to go out there and put in a good lap time. And I think that really makes drivers work even harder, I think, than, um, than going to a regular race meeting. You really have to work to make sure your car is like that three lap fast. Um, and it, like you have to make sure your car is good from, let's say, an early point. You've only got three laps where your car is cold. Not even in the middle of a race, your car is coming out on cold tires or somewhat warm tires. So it is really, make, I think it makes it really, really interesting. I think the draw, even in the tent, is really intense. You know, like who's going to get number one, two, or three? Yeah. Um, and yeah. like that, that the whole thing, the build up is just, I think, is incredible as a driver. It's, it's really cool. I love the way uh, Brian, he's loving it. He loves it, doesn't he? He wants to be back there, you know, which is. Uh, oh, the, the right. build up and everything. Yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> I was thinking when you were talking about the lap times, because, you know, when uh, Ormond used to always put in a, a, a real surprise or Norman Woolsey, <laughs> and I used to always sit on the back straight and uh, the clock was always facing race control. And you could always tell because the, uh, the, the home straight fans would erupt, particularly all the Irish fans in front of the bar. And yeah. you'd, you'd know something special would happen and the clock would yeah, spin around yeah. and it's you know, almost like 14 <laughs> two or something. Brian, it was just and the bar was, was opening. That was where the noise came from. The bar was yeah. opening. Yeah. Was a big cheer, yeah. <laughs> the first track was just being pulled and they were like, yes. Oh yeah, yeah. sorry, there's a time going on there as well. <laughs> No, you said the, you said about tires and, and coming on and obviously it changes a lot in that race. Do you do you feel that actually you must feel it as a driver that all of a sudden you've got that grip, or do you think that might be a, a partly in the mind, or is it just you, the car connecting? Uh just for the three laps, you mean like well, just generally or in the 75 laps. I mean, obviously getting that heat in the three the laps must be kind lap, of tough. I think it's the craziest thing. Uh, you wouldn't even think that a, a set of tires could go through so many changes throughout the race you know like your, your, your car comes on at the start of the race they're, they're really cold well they're cold enough and like you're, you're trying to make sure your car is you're not going to slip and slide out of the way and let someone get up the inside of you and you're dealing with you know 30 cars all around you like 32 cars yeah. even all around you so that is another worrying thing and if you I suppose hold back too much then you're going to lose out on other positions and then I suppose as the race gets on you feel that sweet spot coming and you'll feel you're going to make ground and if you're in a good position on track you're going to make good ground and, you, and if you have a good car again underneath you, you're going to make oppositions. And then you go through the, I suppose, the stage where the, the tyres will either go off or if you're calculated enough to uh, mind your tyres, I think you, you'll, you'll find a big difference. Um, but if you get that sensation of your tyres going off, it's it's very, very hard to, to kind of pull it back. It probably plays in the mind a little, so you, you lose that positive. Yeah. That you, you're not going to make that move. I mean, I yeah, you're going to... Your head is not so bad, I guess. It doesn't see that. I mean, it's, it's which a lot of people say there is no line, but obviously, when the line, when it sort of just all clicks, all of a sudden everyone's going around the outside, like John Christie a few years ago, where it just yeah, yeah. made it work. Lap he after he lap. beat me he actually lap. in 2019 around the outside and the last corner on the NHRPA. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So the Nick yeah. Thomas, and I was yeah. snapping over, but we just picked a better line that would like you'll see it as the day gets on, yeah. you'll see that rubber getting laid down, uh, and the line, you, you yeah. see the line pushing out, and every driver will be pushing out like that. Um, I think Hensford, I think, is a bit more forgiving in regards to the banking. And, you know, it's not as flat. It, it, as it's not as flat, you can have a bit more, I suppose, play with the you know, with the pace you can bring into the into the corner. Um, Epsilon is so flat and it's got that rough kind of element, I think, to it. That, well, um, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, well, I actually, uh, for the people who don't think that there's a racing line or an Epsilon, I think there's a great racing line. If you've got a, you can really race on the outside. I think at Epsilon, you just got to, if you, well, first of all, you have to have a good enough car. If, if you, if I'm lucky enough to have a good car, but I think there's a great line around next to race. If you know how to, if you know how to suppose how to run the line, I suppose you have yeah, to watch people like Chris. Way. You have to watch people like Chris and like 
uh, and, and Rob when they're racing there, like even in their domestic rounds, that's where yeah, you see where the racing amazing. line comes and you know they make it look, yeah. they make it look like they've like mad camber on the car and the banks are huge because they just glide around there <clears throat> really yeah, well. These, um, for the big championship races like the World or the National, um, is fitness a big issue? I mean, I just I, I'm just wondering that you talk about Chris who who you know, clearly he, you know he weighs about as much as my cat and uh, but um you know it's not just weight it's fitness and stamina as well is is that is that an issue or is or can you just get in the car having had a winter in front of the telly and go fast i don't think i could have a full english fry up or irish fry up even and get into the race 75 laps um really fitness i think uh, from what i can gather i think fitness is definitely becoming a bigger part of this race and um like I suppose in, from my own experience, I suppose I've got into the car where I'm unfit and I've tried this was recently to get fitter and get more in shape and physically and, 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 and better like running and stuff. So that I suppose when you're in the car, it has happened when I was younger that I would be, I think it was my first world final. I think I was in the car and I saw a 25 lap board and I said, my shoulders are going to fall off here. Like I just, it was really? just kind of going through the most. Yeah, I, I did feel it. I suppose I don't feel it as much anymore. I, I think I'm a bit older now. I'm mature to maybe a small bit. I don't know that any other other drivers uh, feel this, uh, but I, you know, I think if you are in a seventy-five lap race and you're at twenty-five laps and you're fighting with another another driver, the last thing you want to come into your head is my arms are tired. If you if you can get that yeah. kind of thought out of your head, then you've got yeah. one less thing to worry about and you can concentrate more on your race. I know that I know that Shane used to say that when he was coming up to the world final, he used to be mad on the rowing machine. He used to just be really? flat out on the rowing machine. Yeah, really trying to get his fitness up. I don't know that it make any difference. I don't know that he do it all the way up to when he won the world, but. When he was younger, he said he definitely used to do it. And uh, he used to have it in the kitchen or something. And he used to just be like doing like three or four minute sets. He said before he went out, before I had his dinner. Yeah. Interesting. Well, I'm pretty confident that uh, Chris Head doesn't really do any of the training stuff. I mean, he just turns up, but he, he might be a one off, you know. But <laughs> Chris, uh, Chris has probably gone so far past like experience, experience and all that. He just does it like a robot now. Like he just kind of gets yeah. in. I think he's just like he's playing in a car. He, he, you know, it's just, yeah. that doesn't really apply to certain drivers. <laughs> uh, it, 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 it's got to make a difference, though, isn't it? Like fitness, it's any, so you, are, you are a sportsman. Any marginal gains you can get is going to help. And I think. That when you look at when we talk about world final grid and you look at them drivers and there's so many that are consistently near the front but obviously have, have not managed to get even a podium and you can see that frustration they turn in year in year out so you've got to try to find you know what's going to make the difference really i mean rob, like rob yeah. i mean he's been close uh, obviously succeeded in other formulas but in the world final you know he's not you know not quite got there but yeah, he was so focused you know like, i know he was, uh, he, i will i i see Again, I wouldn't have always have known a Rob, but it's kind of when you go back looking at pictures of Rob, we'll say when he had like the white sea grass, I'd always be looking at it going, you know, he's always kind of there and thereabouts. He was always up around that path. So yeah. like you, you can see, he's a very focused man on a race, on a race day. Like he doesn't, there isn't much that breaks his, his concentration. And like he's very, you can see this year, he was definitely a very determined man to get, mm. to get that, that gold roof and the, and the national championship, you know. Yeah. He was just on a he's on a roll a roll this year that I don't think anybody stopped for a while. Yeah, I, I mean many do that double. I think you know, like say Billy Wood had a, a fantastic year, and uh, yeah, many have sort of like secured that double. Um, and so going to the national championships, how have you fared there over the years? Because it's a tough <laughs> race to to quality. You know, I was, we spoke. I think Shane and Sean was talking how tough it is actually getting the getting the rock the final. Yeah, I was, mm, I was yeah. hoping you would gloss over this question. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, I suppose I. I, I, I haven't really gone, I haven't got a great, great track history. I've never finished a national championship. I've gone on the grid twice. Um, and each time I think I've uh, either crashed out or I was, I think I was spun out uh, last year. Um, so I haven't had a great, I, I actually enjoy the track. I enjoy racing there. And last year was the first year I, I genuinely enjoyed going out there because the car was good. And um, I think I think we kind of made a few mistakes throughout uh, the racing last year in regards to maybe set up with the car on the Friday and then my racing on the Saturday. Um, but I, I really enjoy like the whole, the, the heat and the, the heat racing. And I just enjoy being mixed in with other drivers. It is really, it's cool to be a part of it, I suppose. Um, you know, yeah, it, it's a different experience. It definitely is because you have a lot of cars and you have to make good ground within to even get on the grid. Um, I think it's, a, yeah, like I thought I had done well last year. I was like, I should be up around like, I think ninth row this time, but I was like the 11th row. Or something like that again. I was like, I obviously didn't do as well as I thought about, but yeah. 
it's a very tough grid. Like, yeah, like if you, it's so tough. If you look at even like Jack Blood was on pole this year, you didn't really kind of, I suppose, you would see him in the heats when you're watching Speedworks, the TV and stuff. You would see him up around the front, but like he never like would say won a race, but he was always up in there. And like, that'll just show you where you have to be to even be up around those positions, you know. Yeah, yeah, and and for a lot, me and Brian are pretty, you know, not much experience racing. But do you when you when you're out there in them early laps, you almost pick your moment. You know, you think, right, I'm going to get to that corner, I'm going to go inside or go outside. Or does it just happen and the flow finds itself? Uh, I suppose if you're in the middle of racing, you kind of look at the lane of traffic and who's who's either leading leading the kind of that flow of traffic, and you'll see if it's either a slower driver or you know, is the outside lane moving a bit faster than the the inside. And I suppose at the moment, at the, in that moment, you'll just feel which one you're going to do. Um, yeah, I, I couldn't really, if, if I was looking that far ahead, I think I would be too calculated. But you just kind of have to look at the, like, the, the four car, four or five cars in front of you just yeah. to see where they are, what way they're going and what way the traffic is moving, you know. Sure. So for um, this season, when it does finally get underway, I'm presuming it, you're planning a, a, a full season of National Hot Rods again, are you? In 21? Yeah, 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 yeah. We give it a good bash. Do you have any any plans beyond 21? Do you have aspirations where you want to end up, or is uh, it very much just taking it as it comes? I suppose you know everyone has that goal of chasing those big championships, and then you want that gold roof and, and the national championship. You know, and that's that's obviously the the big goal is to win a major, and that's what that will always be my goal. I'll always I'll always be very hungry for that. I suppose, um, you know. You can, but there is, I suppose, a ladder to get there, and you gotta take your steps as they come, um, into getting to that position, and you have to recognize that. And that if I kind of kept, if I got onto this this video call and said I was gonna be, I'm gonna be world champion next year, and just kept saying it and saying it, I feel like it's not gonna happen. You have to recognize where you're at, and you have to be realistic. Um, so you know, we'll just try and have to try and keep doing the best we can to build a fast car and get, get the best car out there. Um, and hopefully, you know, we'll have a couple of championships come our way and. Hopefully, be up around fighting for position and, and, and we see what we can get out of it. So, the, the main bit is you see National Hot Rods as your future. For the, yeah, uh, 100%. For the yeah, I don't, That's very good. I don't, think I, I don't think I could do anything else in it. <laughs> and, and whilst, hear, whilst yeah. we wait to, to, to get back racing, uh, how are you filling your time? Is, is, is the car ready to go? Turn the key and you're away? Or are you working on it? What, what you There's want? small bits, kind of small bits to do is, you know, put the kit back on it and put some small bits together. We're just taking our time really to try and to stretch it out as long as we can so that, you know, um, we have something to do, I suppose. Uh, but there's that much to do if we need to get back racing, for getting back racing, you know, we'll put it together in a week or two or so. And, and, uh, to it. and are there any other hobbies that fills your time other than national hot rod racing? You're taking up sort of yoga or something in the, in the, in the piece? No, or? I think, I think it, the majority of these podcasts that you'll do, if you ask a driver had to get any other hot, any other national hot rod driver that had to get any other hobbies, they won't say anything. It's more of a way of life than, than anything. Um, yeah, it, be, it really does take yeah. up a majority of our time. You know, there's not much yeah. else you're going to be doing but thinking about this, especially if you want to do well. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think uh, we're pretty much done there, Jeff. I mean, it's been great talking to you. you you've, well, yeah. Me and Brian were a little bit sort of nervous, you know, what we, without showing what we're going to do, but you've talked all the way through. It's been brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what it's all about. It's it's getting to know each other, and let, getting the fans letting to sort of, you know, like they, they're hearing the voice behind the car and the number, you know, like I, I'm yeah, sort of, 100%. Yeah, I've always trying to, you, you guys are heroes to me, or Brian's a hero as well, but it's like, it, it, <laughs> I just want the fans to like engage with the personalities. I think you know we we come from an era where it was like Barry Lee, Duffy Collard, and Allman and stuff, and it's like you know they are they are big names because they were sold as big names as the personalities. There's probably more time yeah. to, to get them out front, but you know we have got this social media, they got the internet. We you need to use it to, to like show what. We're yeah, hundred percent. Well, I think I think at the moment you know between all the platforms of social media that I think it's been used very well, especially on this time after they're, you're really optimizing the, the, the promotion for the sport. It's great. It's great. It's getting a big build up. It's a great, as a driver who's not driving, it, yeah. it's nice to have that buzz of, of, you know, when's it going to start? What's going to happen when it does start? It, it is a great, um, you know, buzz for us to, to get that anticipation. I suppose it must be better for the, for the spectators and the fans that come to watch, you know, that we, that you have that anticipation of when it does get back that, You'll, you'll be looking out for the drivers that you have on these podcasts and, and in the garage, the garage uh, 
the, the videos as well. Like, you know, yeah. they'll be looking out for themselves, which is a great thing to have, you know. I think yeah, yeah. social media has made a great, played a great part in, in, in the promotion of this sport, you know. I think we're sensing a little bit of competition with the garage stuff, you know. I think Colin started off brilliantly, and then and then John was like, "Yeah, he's great, and he's so funny." And we got a, a great one this week lined up. So uh, yeah, it's a we'll, we'll, we'll see now. Can Adam Highland? Highland. Like, we'll see him at Highland beat my my podcast. It'd be hard to beat, you know. I yeah, think we, much, we don't. We're, we're just I got, I'm, I'm much better. I'm much better looking than Adam Highland. So it's fine, like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> We're we're having to get a little poll going up on that, you know. The yeah, best looking 100%. Guy. No, I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Make sure I send you a good photo, though. Make sure you don't put the regular one. <laughs> I'll, do a, I'll do a bit of Photoshop, maybe take some of his features. Yeah, that's it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I'm impressed, I'm yeah. impressed with the trophy. There's trophies behind. I hope they're yours and not your dad's, yeah. you know. Like, uh, uh, there's kind of I'll a mix between... Them up. Uh, yeah, we kind of had to do a bit of rearranging to make sure the good ones are at the front for you. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, there's a couple of mixes between my own and my dad's uh, and Ian's even as well. So it's a good family wall of fame, we call it. Sure, yeah. Good I, know, I know we're a bit out of time, but which is which is the best one up there? Which is the, uh, what's the kind of the, oh, prize, the prize trophy? Oh, there's a good few of them. Uh, there's dad's, uh, he won the NHRPA 2013. That's up that year. He beat majority of good drivers that year. I think he beat John Christie. Uh, he beat the likes of Maxwell and Gavin Murray that year, so that was a great wow. year for us. Uh, I think my own driver of the year trophy is up there. I think I just picked Shane Murphy for an overall driver of the year at Tipper Area Track uh, Championship, which was kind of a, a sweet moment because he was a he was the man ever was watching. So I was a young gun and juniors who got to beat him. <laughs> <laughs> really good, so, really yeah. good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, so uh, I'm going to uh, wrap it up there, and hopefully in a minute I'm going to have to press a button that sort of says, you know, save the disc or something. So uh, yeah, we'll do, all <laughs> we'll do it all again tomorrow. Yeah, all <laughs> again tomorrow. So uh, no matter, yeah. Thanks. Tom and Jeff, uh, good luck for no when matter. we do get yeah, that racing. I really appreciate it, and thank you, Brian. Thank you and, uh, yeah, guys, we'll thanks, be back Gary. next week. So uh, yeah, thank, thank you very much. much. Yeah, thank I you. Appreciate it. Thanks, thanks, Jeff. Thank you. thanks, Gary. Cheers. Yeah.